Hi everyone, Blitz of the Reich here, coming with a small Christmas special for you all. I don't normally do uh, vlogging style videos, but I said, what the heck, I need to get something off of my chest. Now, as you all know, uh, a lot of my followers, a lot of you, tend to be socialists, that's fine. And you all know, me more than anyone, I've dabbled in various political ideologies. I've described a couple of them in my channel. That being said, I can understand the pros and cons of different political ideologies from an ideological perspective, right? But when it comes to the practicality of certain ideologies, I think myself, I'm very hard line in how, in, in how I approach and legitimize the real life application of ideologies. That's especially the case with ideologies like fascism and socialism. Of course, uh, capitalism can't escape criticism duly, but um, this is to let um, something out of, off my chest, particularly with the socialist camp, right? I would describe myself as a social democrat, uh, obviously leaning toward a free market economy, and obviously my background in studying the Soviet Union and the Russian Empire have it has led me to understand the autocracy and the different human rights abuses that happened in both regimes. Of course, in my videos, I try to be unbiased and I try to describe some of the more positive features of each regime, regime and what they did right. For example, with the NEP uh, and women's rights. But then you all obviously have to talk about uh, how Stalin banned abortions, I believe, and severely curtailed um, women's rights and freedoms during the 1930s, uh, right? And that brings me to the case of ide ideology versus practicality. I've noticed on Facebook lately and other mediums that um, an increasing cohort of socialists seem to kind of justify and legitimize their ideology by, by the way of two tactics. That is, they always use whataboutisms, um, trying to use a kind of a utilitarian approach that uh, capitalist regimes are were, are worse than or were worse than socialist regimes because more people have died under them and they'll they'll follow this up by introducing indirect causes like malnutrition, poverty and whatnot. Obviously, they don't apply this same line of thinking to their the own regimes that they kind of protect. And I would say the second has to do with their view on the world being incredibly black and white. I used to, for certain aspects, view the world incredibly black and white, but I've noticed that in order to legitimize their own political movements, they have to sort of justify Maoist China, they have to sort of justify the Soviet Union and whatnot. Now, this makes me perplexed because living in Central Europe now, I've actually met a lot of people from the former Soviet Union and from the former Eastern Bloc. Uh, I've also met people from former Yugoslavia. And of course, a lot of people here tend to be anti-communist for the sake of not being biased. I'm not gonna really mention them too much, but let's talk about the Yugoslavians, the former Yugoslavians. A lot of them are actually, have a pretty positive view or a pretty complacent view on the Tito regime, right, and um, <coughs> the socialist experiment in uh, Yugoslavia. However, they don't pretend for a second that the Stalinist regime was good or that um, the occupation of Czechoslovakia was good by Soviet troops and the Warsaw Pact was good. They don't pretend to think Mao was good. And this is the difference between the militancy in socialist ideology that I've noticed in the West, when I mean West, I mean Western Europe and the United States, and a more pragmatic, more honest view of ideology and the practical application of it in other parts of the world, right? Um, and I think that strategy of being sort of ideologically chivalrous uh, kind of legitimizes 
um, Yugoslavian socialism because honestly, like I said, if I had to live under any socialist regime, I'd probably pick Yugoslavia. They have one of the least uh, track records uh, when you compare the Soviet Union and Mao's China. That Then again, I'm not trying to spread a, a harsh critique of the Soviet Union in, in the video. That's not my point. My point is essentially this um, whataboutism is stems from the fact that it's it, I have the impression that a lot of socialists think that the abhorrent regimes that existed that attempted the socialist experiment they are representation proper representations of the ideology um, therefore they try to justify all their actions in order to make their ideolo ideology more credible now I don't really like bad mouse productions uh, but he was a bit I, I did like the fact that he tried to uh, dis disavow the Venezuelan regime, right? Um, the problem with his critique is that he was like, oh no, because it's capitalist and stuff. Again, this black and white picture that uh, if you try socialism and you fail, um, that's because you, you weren't really socialist to begin with, begin with. And I think that's inconsistent. Now, that leads me to another socialist YouTuber, um, the Finnish Bolshevik. He's probably one of the more or most dishonest um, socialist YouTubers I've seen, um, especially that he's essentially like, he, his channel seems a little bit like a meme to me. I'm sorry to say if any of you follow him, but it does seem like a meme. You know, I actually done the research. I've actually met with academics, professors, read countless books, read through primary literature, actual translated, albeit, 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 whatever, translated uh, documents from the Soviet regime itself. However, um, he is essentially an, an apologist, a Stalinist apologist, you know. I, I've seen a lot of his videos. I've tried to give him a bit of credibility. Whereas I couldn't say the same for Bad Mouse. Um, I disagree with him a lot, but at least... He's trying, because it's always difficult. There's always a confirmation bias in every single ideolo ideology. There are capitalists who think in order to justify capitalism, you have to justify every single capitalist regime. Uh, same with fascists, same with every ideology. And I think it's really... That ruins credibility of ideologies, because ideologies aren't sciences. I don't care what you think it is, that you think it is, but it, ideologies aren't science, uh, sciences. They're essentially different kind of policies uh, that we can kind of combine depending on the geographic situation of a country, depending on the socioeconomic situation, the ethnic situation. There's just so much nuance and complexity, which is why political science can be viewed from such an objective, historical mater historically materialist uh, perspective as with Marxism. That's part of the reason why I, I can't um, view Marxism like that. Surprisingly, fascism actually is a lot more spiritual and is honest in the way that it doesn't pretend to sort of hide behind empiricism like capitalism and socialism do. But it's replaced, obviously, by this increasingly totalitarian mindset and mentality that's very difficult to to destroy. For example, you have socialist regimes that were totalitarian, but you also have ones that were more authoritarian, like Khrushchev and Brezhnev and whatnot. Uh, but fascist regimes tend to be totalitarian because of the collective structure of fascism that stems from the spirituality of the new uh, the new man, the new fascist man. I talked about that and the increasing rejection of empirical data now i hope this won't alarm people i'll give an example uh i was on facebook and i saw one of my friends posting a meme about um how seven thousand people have died trying to cross the u.s border between i think for the in the last 50 years whereas only 200, around 200 people were shot and killed 
crossing the Ber- Berlin. It was posted by a radical left-wing uh, revolutionary. I don't know what, that, what the heck that means. Um, on Twitter, and it was very disingenuous because, first of all, it's only counting Berlin. It's not counting the whole Iron Curtain. And then I saw one of their other posts trying to say, like, oh, yeah, only 400 people died crossing the Iron Curtain between 1961 and now. And it's a bit um, dishonest. In I believe in, the Ch- in Czechoslovakia, 280 died. Um, I think this is from 1945 to to the end of the Iron Curtain, it was about 900 for East and West Germany, but it was definitely not 400. That's a that's a very low estimate. But it's just to show that there's this tit for tat mentality, and using the strategy of tit for tat isn't going to help you. It's not going to encourage debate. It's actually going to stifle debate. Um, I think the best approach. Uh, is to stop using whataboutisms and stop trying to justify regimes that are completely abhorrent. Because when you disavow them via the capitalist critique, like Bad Mouse did with Venezuela, you're hurting your cause even more because you're pretty much stating that socialism is defined in such narrow margins and that it's never been attempted. So therefore, it's free of guilt it's what you're kind of saying when when it's not true there's capitalist regimes that have done bad there's socialist regimes that have done bad fascist regimes that have done bad you know and we can't analyze by just doing relativist uh, uh, a relativist analysis of it right so that being said another issue i forgot to mention regarding the tweet on the u.s mexico border uh, the person who tweeted it was wrong because most of the border is actually completely desert. I've been to it. There are large sections that aren't even manned. So a lot of the deaths were also due to the elements. Now, to conclude the video, uh, so that's my main issue with um, socialists nowadays, especially in the West. They use this kind of tit-for-tat, what about and they also um, they also um, try to divert evidence. But here's the main issue that I have. The main issue that I have is that they use indirect consequences of capitalist policy. Um, I've you've seen this in Bad Mouse's production, a, a lot of the other people's production, right? Sorry for the door. Um, but they don't apply this sort of logic uh, consistently with their own socialist regimes, right? Of course, we can criticize the direct causes of the famine in 1933. A lot of it stemmed from uh, the collectivization uh, from Stalin. But people on that camp criticize the West not by using direct causes like that. They use indirect causes like Oh, in the West, there's a higher poverty rate, more homeless people, more uh, less uh, nourishing diets and stuff. But we can apply that same logic back to the former Soviet bloc, uh, to China. We can apply that logic very easily, right? If you're going to say to me that the U.S. capitalist system reduces life expectancy by five years because of primarily because of the diet, uh, can we not sort of use that same thinking to attack the Soviet regime, saying that, oh, they also have a lack of diet, or the alcoholism in the 1980s? But I never see a lot of these uh, socialists in the West using that even uh, critique approach, and I think it's just disingenuous, you know? So that's my final point. I just wanted to make it very clear how I feel about this. Sorry this isn't my usual animated video, but I kind of wanted to do a vlog to give you all something to listen to while you're playing games. But if you like this um, and you want to see more of this, these kind of videos while I work on my main documentaries, please feel free to comment, uh, like, dislike, do whatever you want. Um, I very rarely, if at all... Um, delete comments. I will never. I'm an uh, 
ardent uh, supporter of uh, free expression, as long as it's not spam. Um, so please feel free. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.